Good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys for joining us for the draw the drawing board. Come on. Can you just throw it in the chat? Come on. Encourage your self. Come on, just put that. Come on, just just encourage yourself this morning. Come on and tell yourself, hey, it's going to be an awesome week. It is going to be a great week. Come on. I don't know what kind of week you had last week. Maybe you had a great week or maybe you had a week down in the valley. But come on, encourage yourself in the Lord. Come on. I, I love that song. I love that scripture. I love where the scripture says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. So come on, let, as we get ready to dive into, come on, we're getting ready to, what I love about the drone board family, it's, uh, hey, maybe you're new here and, or maybe this is your, you know, your first time joining us. What we love about the drone board, it is our time that we carve out where we get to go beyond the message. Come on, let's, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go a little bit farther to see what God is saying even more. And what I do, I, I really love the series that we're in. The series that we're in right now, the first day of forever, the first day of forever. And what I love about this is we're unpacking the, 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 the miracles that Jesus did. It's uh, specifically in the book of John. As you know, if you study the book of John, the book of John is all about it's a, it's a book of signs. As we get to see that Jesus actually performed these signs so that people can actually see that he is indeed the Messiah that he is indeed the savior. And as we're unpacking these, these various miracles, I love to look at these miracles. Of course, we, we, we study Jesus in the text, but also I, I like to go a little bit further and I actually like to look at the person who's actually been, who, who's actually having the encounter with Jesus. I, I like to put myself in, in, in that person's shoes. I, I, I like to go through, even when I'm studying in the text, I, I, I want to feel what they feel. I, I want to hear what they're hearing. I want to see what, what they see, especially me. I'm a, I'm a visual learning learner. So I love to put myself in those shoes because I want to see what, what were they experiencing during that time? I also like to put myself in, in that, in those shoes because I, I love to see, okay, how would I react if I was in that position? I, I, I wonder, I wonder what I would have had the same thought process. I, I wonder if what my default would have been this. I, I just wonder. So as we study it in the text, but one thing what I do love about it, just as we have in common interest, hey, they had an encounter with Jesus and that their, their life changed. Their, their life did not stay the same. Even in the text that we're getting ready to dive into when Jesus touched you and G you have an encounter with Jesus, not only do it, does your life change, but I love that the people around you, life begins to change as well. So as we studied in the text, if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to John chapter four, and we're going to kick start right there in verse 46. And as I'm setting this up right now, if I can just set the scene up a little bit, a little bit better than even a little bit deeper than I did yesterday uh, for, for our Sunday sermon. The, the, the powerful thing about this text, if I can set it up, that, that Jesus goes back to Canaan. If you would walk with us in week one, we we unpack when Jesus turned the water into wine. And he did this at the wedding of Canaan. So Jesus actually he 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 um he goes away from Canaan and now the scripture tells him that he's coming back where he performed his first miracle. And and this is the beautiful thing because this is early in Jesus' ministry. I, I really want to point this out. This is early in Jesus' ministry. The, the word is starting, it's not fully out yet. The word is starting to spread about Jesus. This is very powerful. I, and I'm, I'm gonna come back to this. Because this is not this is not later in his ministry where 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 Jesus' name is everywhere. No, this is early in his ministry, and this is powerful. But the word is already getting out. The word is already getting out just from his first miracle. The word is already getting out. And what's powerful about this is that in Capernaum, which if you studied Capernaum, Capernaum is actually by the Lake of Galilee. So I want you, I want you, I want to set this text up because just like me, I, I want you to catch the visual of what this royal official went through just to get to Jesus. So now the royal official is off in Capernaum 
and and he's a royal official. He's he's a man of prestige. He he's actually close to to, to the King Herod. He 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 has status. He has power. He he's has prestige. He's he's a significant individual. So I, I want you to I want to set this text up so you understand where he's leaving and where he's going. So he's in Capernaum. And Capernaum is by the Lake of Galilee. So it's at sea level. Let, let me point that out. It's at sea level, but 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 he's going to Canaan, which is all which which is almost twenty miles away from Capernaum, but it's at a higher elevation. So I I want you to point this out. More likely by foot, he had to travel from a low elevation in order to get to Jesus, who's at a high elevation. He's, he has to travel almost 20 miles. And he's desperate because he, he probably tried everything else. His wealth cannot fix this problem. His connections cannot fix this problem. His status of who he is and who he knows cannot fix this problem. And, and I, I really do. I think this is powerful because even for myself, and you can put yourself in 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 this shoes. Come on, this is what I what I was setting the text up with. I love to put myself in in the text, in the shoes of the, what the person is going through. I can understand of man, you can be in one room and you can feel powerful, and you can leave that room and go into another room and feel defeated. Come on, come on, somebody. In one room, you feel like you're you're doing everything that you can. And things are happening, things are moving. Maybe that's on your job, but 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 and you go into another room and your health is failing, and you're talking to the doctor, and you don't know you don't know how to fix what you're going through. Or, or, or maybe you're winning on the job, but you go home and your your family is going through some things, and you just seem to cannot get this right. Come on, somebody. I'm winning over here, but I'm still losing over here. How how am I the same person that can move mountains and things begin to happen? But when I go over here, I I, I just seem I can't get this right. I, I really God God really was pushing that. I seen I just cannot get this right. So he's desperate. Come on, come on, desperate by but by any means necessary. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. So, so he begins to leave and he goes to see about Canaan. This is, this is very powerful. If, you, if you're taking notes with our time today, write this down. He heard. He heard. When he heard, he moved. This is powerful because he heard about what Jesus has done. Only one miracle. The winemaker. <laughs> he heard about the winemaker. And he he had I, I've been trying everything that I can, but I seem not to get this right. And this is powerful. Never stop being in the position to always hear what Jesus is doing. Let, let, let me say that again, because what watch how powerful this is. He's off in Capernaum, but he hears, not see. He just hears about the activity of what God is doing. See, this is powerful because now take yourself. In the society that we live in, whether it's on your job, whether it's the news, whether you can be around family or friends, sometimes you can be in an environment where the noise around you is just always toxic. The noise around you is just always negative. The noise around you is just always, and somebody's in a pitfall, and somebody is is, is just 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 feeling feeling bad and feeling out, and this can be draining sometimes. Come on, somebody, put that. We we, we all can be truthful. Sometimes miserable love just company. What's the saying? And so sometimes you can be around these in, in, in the society, in that environment, in in that ecosystem, and it's just draining you. But now this is powerful. This this royal official was in such a position where he heard, man, can we position ourselves such in a way where we're always hearing about the activity of God? This is why you're here on the drawing board. Come on, early in the morning. And for our YouTube folks and our, our YouTube folks who's going to watch it on demand later, this is why you're carving out time 
so that you can position yourself to always be in a position of hearing about the activity of God. This is why I love Sundays. Come on. This is why I can't miss Sunday, whether I'm the pastor or not. I got to be in the room because I know I need to hear about your story. I need to hear about your story. I, I need to hear about what God is doing in your life. Here's what that going to do. It's going to do. It's going to encourage my faith. Encourage yourself. One of the best things you can do this week is put yourself in a position to encourage yourself. I, I need to hear about the testimonies because as God is moving in your family, I know God is right around the corner to touch my family in a way. If God is moving in your finances, I know that God is right around the corner and he's going to touch my finances in a special way. If I need him to touch my health, I know I want to hear about the activity. I want to hear about cancer being defeated. Come on, somebody. I want to hear about high blood pressure being defeated. I, I want to hear about it because whatever I may be going through, if I can see the activity out there of what God is doing, it's going to increase my faith. The royal official heard about Jesus, so he went. Never stop filling yourself up, filling your spirit up with hearing about what Jesus is doing. Let's walk the text. We're, we're in John 4, chapter Chapter um, chapter four, verse 46. And I'm going to just unpack it. Then we're going to we're going to camp out somewhere real quick. But I want you to catch. He heard. Now he didn't just hear, but also put this in your notes. He went. He went. He heard. Now he went. <laughs> Not only did he hear, but he went. He ran to Jesus. I need you to catch this. Not not caring how far. He had to travel. He just wanted to be in his presence. Come on. How bad do you want it? That, that, that's what we said yesterday in, in, in church service. If you what service, if you wasn't with us, how bad do you want it? How, how bad do you want it in this season to get to Jesus? How bad do you want it in this season to touch Jesus, to, to hear from Jesus, to, to present your prayers to Jesus? It doesn't matter what my what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what people think about me. It doesn't matter if they're going to say this about me. It doesn't matter what I'm up against. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make sure that I'm in the presence of my king. Come on, somebody. <laughs> That's a non-negotiable. So even for your week this week, uh, make sure that you carve out time to get to Jesus. I, I don't care what my schedule is. I, I don't care how busy I am. I don't care how tired I am. Come on. I know daylight saving times and you, you lost that hour and you're probably feeling it right now. But you know what? I don't care how tired I am because I'm desperate to be in your presence, my king. I know you're the only source that can fill me up the way that I need to be filled. This is why you're up early on a 7 a.m. call, because you're desperate and you are running to him. You, you are leaving Capernaum and still so that you can get to Canaan. You, you are going on a journey. And hear me, as we study the text, this journey is uphill. This is this journey is uphill. You, but how desperate are you? Are you willing to leave a place that's comfortable to, in order to get to Jesus? Because you know, you Jesus is the only one that can touch the very thing that you need to be touched. He's in Capernaum. Like I said, he has he has status. He has connection. He's a royal official. In other words, people are people per perceive him as somebody. Who, who, who can get things done. In other words, he's serving a king already. I need you to catch this. He's serving a king already. So he, 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 leaves, his, he leaves his throne, his position, in order to actually go to the real king of kings. Come on. He leaves serving one individual in order to go serve and hear from another individual. And sometimes God would tell you to, to you have to leave what you used to serve in order to get into the position that the only, this is the only king that can really serve you. So he lowered himself. He, he didn't allow pride 
to, to miss his opportunity from being in the presence of the Messiah. Come on. He, he did not allow pride to keep him away from his blessing. So he had to what? He had to actually be vulnerable and, and expose himself so that people are going to judge him when he gets back. But he doesn't care. I, I, I don't care what you have. You probably going to have to say about me. My son needs to be touched. And whatever I need to do, I would do whatever I need to do. I, I don't know what you are holding in this season right now. And it seems at it's at, it's at its last breath, but I'm desperate to get to Jesus. So what? He went. He went. Let that be your prayer request this week. Man, whatever you are carrying, maybe it's on his last breath. You feel like this role you're official. Hear from Jesus and then go. Go. So now he travels. Remember I said he travels from Capernaum all the way to Canaan. Almost 20 miles uphill. And when he gets there, he asked. Write that down. He asked. Not only did he not only did he heard, he went, but he also he asked. And and this is powerful because he made he made a he made a bold request to Jesus. I mean, put yourself in his shoes. This is this is almost 20 miles. And and more likely, this is probably on foot. He had time to actually, come on, play this out in his head. Come on, put yourself in the text. If you're on a journey and you're traveling almost 20 miles, you are playing this whole story out in your head. Well, man, when I, when I find Jesus, one, he has to find Jesus. But when I find Jesus, okay, I'm going to say it this way. Okay, well, when, when I get in contact, I, got, I can't miss this opportunity. It's almost like he has to set up a pitch for his business. And he's like, I got this elevate, uh, elevator pitch, and, and I, can't, I can't miss this opportunity. He has time to rehearse all of this is in his head. And he probably, if he, if I put myself in a text, he, I, I, I'm, I'm going to rehearse what I believe what Jesus is going to say back to me. If I say this in desperation and show my tears and show my emotions because I'm desperate, more likely because Jesus is going to have compassion, he's probably going to respond this way. So he goes on a journey and he gets there. And, and, and Jesus actually responds in, in, in a different form and fashion. I mean, come on, put yourself in the text. More likely, the royal official probably wants Jesus to travel back to his home, lay hands on his son. He, he, he wants Jesus to, to leave Canaan and travel all the way back to Capernaum, put eyes on his son, speak the word, yes, but also lay hands and see the healing. But, but what do you do when, when Jesus responds to your prayer about what you're carrying in the form or, or fashion that you did not desire? Mm. I mean, I, 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 I know the royal official probably wanted Jesus to respond with going back to the home, but Jesus responded what? I'm going to send my word. I'm going to send my word. So he receives the word. He asks, and now he, he receives the word. But watch this. I, I, I need you to catch this. He has to turn and go back to, to, um, to Capernaum. He has to turn back and travel back almost 20 miles. Jesus is not going with him. Jesus is now taking the journey with him. He has to walk. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm catching it now. I'm catching it. I don't think we actually broke this part down in the message. I, I want to talk about the journey. I want to talk about the journey here, the journey of the in-between. Mm. The journey of the in-between. This means that you're in between a word and a promise. Yeah. You're, you're in between a, a word or a problem. <laughs> it's all about perspective. He receives the word in Canaan, but he has to travel back to Capernaum. So he's in the in-between. Uh, he received the word. Jesus said, go back, go. 
Your son is going to be healed. Go. Your your health is going to be healed. Come on. Go. Your your mind is going to be healed. Go. Your your family is going to be healed. Come on. If I keep going, I'm I'm going to touch your life right now. Go. Your your finances is going to be healed. All he had was a word from Jesus, but he still had to travel back to the very thing that was done. What do you do when you're stuck in the in between? Uh, you 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 been in Canaan, but you're on your way back to Capernaum. Mm, I, I don't know what your Capernaum is in this season right now, but I can think a few things right now in my life. Oh, that's a Capernaum right now. That that that's a problem right now. That that's an interruption right now. That that's something I didn't plan right now, and I have to travel back. I I, I prayed about it. I fasted about it. I heard from Jesus about it. Jesus spoke to me, but I still have to travel back. I'm I'm stuck in the in between. I, I, I'm stuck in the in-between of just having a word from Jesus. You have a word. What, what's that word right now? What's that word? If you're taking notes, ah, come on, if you're taking notes, nobody else needs to know right now. Just start jotting down what that word is. I, I know you've been viewing and putting your eyes on Capernaum. Capernaum is the problem. Capernaum is the thing that's done. Capernaum is the prayer request. Capernaum is the very thing that you need Jesus and only Jesus can move right now, but you still received a word in Canaan. What's that word right now? Because this is powerful what I'm getting ready to say, because not only did he ask, but he also believed. He asked, but he also believed. Watch how powerful this royal official belief is, because he has to take a long walk back to Capernaum. And, and, and as he's traveling back, come on, 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 he's going back downhill right now. A dusty road, probably. Come on. And he has to walk by faith, not by sight. The scriptures tells us that, that wow, and I'm going to read this right here in verse 51, John chapter 4, verse 51. It, it says, while he was still going down. Talking about he's, he, he's, leaving, he's leaving Canaan and he's going back down to Capernaum. While he was still going down, his servants met him saying that his boy was alive. He asked him at what time did he get better? This, this is back powerful because if I back up, matter of fact, let me back up in verse 50. It says, go, Jesus told him, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and departed. He believed the word. He believed the word without putting eyes on the problem. He believed the word without saying that if Jesus is actually really going to, if Jesus actually really turned it already. He heard the word and he believed the word. Here, here's my prayer. Here's my prayer for you. Here's my prayer for you is that, is that let us not, because when you're stuck in the in-between, let us not have, let us not have conditional type of faith. That's it. Let us not have conditional type of faith, but 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 rather, and here, let me, let me break it down. This is what conditional type of faith is. A conditional type of faith is, I, I, I only believe it until, until I see it. Excuse me. I only believe it until I see it. I, I only believe it until it happens. I, I only testify uh, of the goodness of God until I, until I actually see it. So you see, faith goes in with an expectation of knowing that God is getting ready to do it, even though I don't see it. So, so let us not have conditional type of faith, but rather let's have actually commitment type of faith. God, I'm committed to your word. God, if you said it, I believe it. God, if you said the word about my life, I I. But believe it, I, I haven't made it back to Capernaum to even know if your word is true. Come on, somebody. I, I, I haven't even made it back yet. I, all I have is your word. Is God word enough in your life right now?
Is, is his word enough? Even down to the, the logos, is his word enough? Is, is this enough to encourage you? Is this enough to make you believe? Is this enough to, to pick you up and get you out of that grave so that you can walk and be a light into the world? Is this enough? Is his word powerful enough? Here, I'm here to remind you today that God's word is still powerful. God's word never fails. God's word does not return to him void. God's word still moves in your life. This man believed. He believed, and so he went. And this is what faith is all about. This is what faith, he believed. Ah, that's powerful. And I, before I move, he believed before even he saw proof with his own eyes. Man. Do you do, do, are, are you waiting to walk by faith until you see it? Or, or, or is his word enough? Faith doesn't manifest when you receive what you ask for. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Faith becomes evident somewhere on the journey between prayers offered and prayers answered. Come on, come on. Come on, that's when that's when faith begins to manifest. It's when you're on the journey. All each and every one of us, we're on a journey right now. I I, I don't know what your journey looks like, but what I do know for sure, you're in between something. You're you're you're, you're in between a word and a problem. You're you're in between a word and a promise. You're, you're stuck in between. And you're waiting for God to move. You're waiting for God to answer that, that prayer you released in, in, in Canaan and your journey, you're, you're on the walk back. Allow your faith to manifest while you're stuck in between. Allow your faith to manifest in the next step. Allow your faith to manifest when you, when, when you need God to move again. Allow your faith to overwhelm you in its presence. So you know what, God? I lose control of myself so that I can gain control of you. We don't have to be in control. Allow God to be in control. And faith does that exactly for you. As I get ready to close out and we get, get ready to open up the room, because I, I, I believe a lot of us, we've been, we've been to Canaan and we're traveling back to Capernaum. And remember this, remember to let trust and obedience be what guides you in this season. Remember to allow trust and, and, and obedience and keep walking by faith, allowing God's word to lead you home. Man, you, I know you have to go back and, 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 and face Capernaum. You, you, you have to go back and face it. And, and for, for some of us, we're, we're facing Capernaum every day. Man. If everything that you're praying for, you have to go back and face it's ill. It seems like it's on its last breath. You 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 just don't know. And I I, I wanna I wanna be sensitive to this moment right now. And 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 I I understand what you what you could be going through as, as God is showing me and telling me. I I I, I can understand. I, I know what it feels like to 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 leave Canaan and go back to Capernaum. And to be honest, you still have some some level of uncertainty. And here, here's what I learned on my journey back to Capernaum. Here's what I learned with leaving Canaan. I, I continue to learn to, to release myself of controlling what I really cannot control and allow God to be God in my life. That's, that, that's my prayer for you right now. Sometimes God loves to leave room in your life so that he can actually be God in your life. Sometimes God loves to, to leave room so he can actually be the savior that he actually is. And sometimes Anthony, and sometimes maybe that's a word for you. Sometimes God, you, you're actually trying to be God in your life. And God is saying, no, that's my seat. I, I, I need you to allow me to do what I do. I, I need you to, to, to move out of my seat and allow me to be God. And here's what it does. When, when God begins to move in a powerful way that he moved even in this text, man, our faith begins to increase. Could it be that you're on this journey called you're on this journey so that you can see that he's indeed the Messiah? 
That's why we named it the sermon yesterday or on Sunday, sightseeing. Because I believe that this portion of your journey, could it be that God actually is setting you up so that you can put eyes on his activity so that your faith can be increased? And here's the powerful thing. Here's the powerful thing as I get ready to, to camp out and then close out. The powerful thing is this. Not, not only did the royal official faith that he um, believed, but here's the powerful thing. The house was saved as well. Man, he put his eyes on Jesus and he, he got converted and he believed in the Messiah, but also the home was converted. And now the home is converted. Who, who knows who else got touched because this royal official decided to go on a journey. We don't we don't even know the extension, an extended version of, of this story that, that maybe that even inside that that, that, that that government official, maybe there's some other officials that got touched as well. We, we, we don't know the impact. All we know is right now that the royal official got started believing in his household all because he decided to go on a journey. Man, I, 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 wanna, I, want, I, want, I want you to be reminded your journey is not in vain. Your, your journey is worth the trip. Your journey is worth the wait. We talked about that last Sunday. What you're carrying right now, my friend, it's worth the wait. Here's why it's worth, because it's just not for you. It's for somebody that you're probably not even going to meet. Your story matters. Embrace it today. I know you don't love every chapter about it, but 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 here's the beautiful thing. I'm telling you, God can use every chapter in your story. The very thing that you want to erase, God can actually use it. The very thing that, that you are trying to etch out, God is actually trying to release because he can use every bit of it. He is the great exchange. He is the one that can turn it. He is the one that can release it. So when we embrace him, we embrace our true identity. It may be part of your story, but it is not you. It may be part of your story, but you have him. And as long as we have him, God can use whatever he wants to use. Amen. 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 So remember this family. For our time together, come on, he heard. But he went, but he also, he asked, and then he believed. And well, what are you believing for in this season? Well, well what are you believing for? What, what was the prayer request in, in, in Canaan? And I know you're on your journey back to Capena. And whatever it is, we join you in agreement today. We, we join you right here on the drawing board. We join you in agreement of knowing, come on, by boldness and by your faith, your God loves you, and he is a God that hears your prayers. He sees your tears. He sees your journey. He has eyes on you. He's watching you, and he's seeing you always going the extra mile. You are seen by God, my friend. Come on. Your father loves you, and his word says this as I get ready to close. His word says that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He has his eyes set on you. Keep marching, keep moving, keep believing, keep praying. Come on, keep singing. Keep singing about the goodness of your God. Amen, 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 amen.